Where is it to encounter the teachings of the Buddha? Now we hear it. If we do not seek the truth of the Dharma in this life, in what life shall we find them? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we all together absolve into ourselves the principle of the way to enlightenment and the way to witness highest aspiration. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the Dharma and gain wisdom and see us devotion. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become the unity to ensure order, in a life of harmony, in a spirit of universal friendship, free from our selfish behavior by taking responsibility. Even through ages of myriads of coppers, hard it is to hear such an excellent and profound and wonderful teaching. Now we are able to hear and receive it. They will surely understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teaching. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Our understanding of Jodo Shinshu. I am one of everyone. I am a part of the world. I always receive help and support from others, which is called the power to make my life enjoyable. Although I cannot always be kind and gentle to others, others always help me to make my life enjoyable. How grateful I am that other people's help and support appear here and there to make my life enjoyable. When I feel the kindness of others, saying Namo Amidabut becomes my expression of deep gratitude. Namo Amidabut. Namo Amidabut. Namo Amidabut. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for participating in today's friends and family service here at the Friends of Betsy Buddhist Temple. Also, today we have a BWA conference, Buddhist Women Conference at the Weekly Buddhist Church. So I was thinking you know, all the women is disappeared today. But thank you so much. <laughs> you know, actually, this is the first Sunday to me as a real one as speaking. Because on the first Sunday we had Woo! day service. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> then uh, last Sunday we had Reverend Dean Koyama from our the Buddhist temple had a wonderful message for the Omegan service. So today I will have a first talk. So in, in the beginning of my talk, uh, please everyone join me in God's show. I will read the three uh, language of Buddha's words. One in Sanskrit, one in Japanese, and one is in translation in English. Satsen mi Bhagavan Sashim Buddha Kaksema Nirayo Ba Kiragyo ni la Ba Trepa Visayo Ba Sarova Kayo Bhagven Ma Tubat Aham Anutaram Tatoi Butsu Etarani Kunigi Jigoku Gaki Chikusho Araba Shogaku Koraji O Buddha Lokesubara Raja I, Dharmakara Bodhisattva, will achieve the state of enlightenment, which means I will share the teaching of the Buddha as Amida Tathagata. If my teaching is free from the three delusional belief. Number one, the teaching is free from any discrimination of all sentient beings. There is no superior creature nor inferior creature. Everything equally exists. Number two, the teaching is free from spirit or ghost to make people believe to follow their faith, petitional prayer, nor superstition. Number three, 
the teaching is free from the divisional afterlife belief of hell. While conventional faith forces people to follow their teachings because people want to avoid it. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Again, thank you so much for participating in today's uh, first uh, Wimbun uh, Friends and Family Service this morning. So, uh, so first I'd like to uh, give an update, okay, uh, give a Wimbun update, okay. So, I will start going to start uh, Otaku Lao or Otaku Lao. Have you seen in the social hall and the uh, FPC, the multi-purpose multi room, they have a corner, say, Reverend Cast Corner, Wimbun Cast Corner, which is a great way uh, that Ma Ma Michael and I mean, Hayashi made all the posture, you know, making a sign for the corner. So that's why I started uh, utilizing the, my, my corner. So then I added one of the illustrations my daughter uh, drew, which is a Japanese animation character, then which is called uh, Otaku La. Do you know what Otaku means? Uh, that, that's a Japanese term? Nerd. 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 Right? N E R D. <laughs> Nerd. Have you heard uh, the city of Akihabara in Tokyo? That's, a, uh, that's kind of an uh, epic center of otaku culture. So, all the Japanese animation figure, manga, you know, everything you can find in Akihabara city in Tokyo. That's nearby the airport, Narita. So, if you have a chance, please visit uh, uh, Akihabara uh, city. So, you will find all the costume people. You know, have you heard of costume play? All the people figuring out, uh, not like a, a, a trick or treat. You know, we have a traditional trick or treat costume, just like an all the, you know, like a demo or something funny. But you know, the Japanese costume play is costuming uh, Japanese character, animation, which is maybe some of you know the Dragon Ball. Have you heard of Dragon Ball? Right? There's some people nodding, right? So, so these kind of costumes they wear. So, you know, if you go into the Akihabara city, in the entrance, in the, uh, exit in the uh, station, you, you see all the people uh, wearing all the kind of figure. Just like uh, every day, like a Disneyland type of city. So that's kind of uh, what the otaku means. So that, or I was going to start, uh, which is uh, just uh, uh, sharing the fun of Japanese pop culture with a mindfulness uh, meditation culture. Because, you know, in many kind of Japanese culture relating the mindfulness. So not necessarily just do a certain form of meditation. Because you know, assembling plastic models. Have you seen that when, when you're a child foot, you make a battleship and fire, you know, those kind of plastic models? That means that you have a, so much intention, you know, pay attention, right? That you use about hands and things, right? So that's like a, something like a Japanese known as a plastic model called Gampula. Have you heard of Gampula? Maybe I'm introducing a lot of new words, right? Gampula. Okay, Gampula is more like a well-known uh, English term, Gampula. Okay, that's a Gandamukula model. That's in Japanese, Gampula. So I have a, one example of Gampula. So you are amazing. <laughs> okay, so this is a Panera book, but, 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 but you know, inside is different. So one of my Gampula, which I, I assembled maybe about five years ago, that the Gampula means the Gundam. Have you heard of Gundam? That, uh, that's a, like a robot animation manga? <laughs> really, you want it, right? <laughs> but this one, actually, I uh, assembled all the different pieces. Like a red color pieces, and white color pieces, and red color pieces, uh, with yellow pieces. So when you assemble, then it looks like a figure. Just like a you know, Lego block. Right, you know that, right? So th those kind of things I'm trying to introduce at the Ota Club. You know, I will try to get all the stuff from Japan. You know, nowadays, thanks to the Amazon.co.jp, not .com, you know, they, they have all the variety of those kind of models. You just ship in a week. So you can get those kind of stuff, you know, just assemble. Then this, you know, process to assemble those kind of things is that uh, needs your attention, you know, line up, line up mindful. Right? That's why I can utilize this. Then this is not only for kids. Like me, like a middle-aged man, is enjoy those kind of stuff. So you know, you can enjoy. Then this, you know, then Gampula has all different kind of models. Not only this one. They're also the small scales on the more bigger scale. Then right now I'm working on one of the plastic models. It's almost like a D 
this side. It's a huge amount. So you will see it in the later, okay? They also, I'm trying to introduce the Japanese coloring book. You know, just a Japanese animation, then you just do the coloring. They also, how you, you know, like a, uh, color your own paper, that was also a form of meditation. Because you can just draw whatever, right? But you know, also you can just follow the line for the cartoon character, then just, just, you know, just nicely draw those kind of, you know, color with all crayon or the pen, uh, color pencil. That's also the main form of meditation. And also, Japanese is known as a love of puzzle. Do you do the puzzle? No? That's too much time to consume, right? But you know, this is a, uh, maybe some of you know the One Piece, the Japanese animation called One Piece. So One Piece of uh, uh, puzzle. So this is only 150 pieces. So maybe just on 10 minutes you can make. And also they have a little thousand pieces of different kind of character. Also that's good. also I, I like to introduce because you know, these kind of things also need a lot of mindfulness, right? That's why these kind of things is fun and also you can cultivate mindfulness. So you get a win-win situation. And also I like to introduce the different models, okay? Like a wood, wood paper craft, wood craft. See, that's a Buddhist uh, pagoda. So this one I only made from the one piece of paper, uh, wood, then just assemble like this. You're amazed, right? But you know, this only takes like maybe a couple hours. So this is a wood burning, right? Then I also have metal. So this one has more, you know, you need to be careful to bend all the metal because it's easy to break it up. So that's why you, know, you, need, you need more pay attention to how you make nice shape and curve and stuff that you can make like this. It's maybe only like a five bucks. But you know, you can uh, cultivate your own skill for the mindfulness. So mindfulness is have all different kinds of form, and especially Japanese culture introducing all the different kinds of form, puzzles and craft, plastic model. That's what I like to introduce as an otaku club. Okay, so right now uh, we have a storage room next to the gymnasium and the FTC uh, we call PA system room, PA room. So now thankfully the, uh, there's Gordon Misaki? Okay, so Gordy Misaki is now cleaning up the, all the physical work he's doing, then uh, trying to take out the, all the uh, storage stuff in the, the room. And later, uh, so here we have a te techie guy, and Greg Tsunama, is thankfully he's uh, organizing all the cabling in the PA system so that I can use the space for a more useful way for providing those kind of OTAN cloud. So we only have a table and also display showcase. So later we can see and all the, everyone's, uh, you know, the models to make. Then later, hopefully at one time, we can sell these. Then all the, all the profit go back to all the kids who make those kind of models. So that way they can unlimitedly create those kind of plastic models. That's how I'm trying to uh, introduce OTAN cloud, okay? So that's not no age limit. You know, from zero, uh, one month, one day old to 100 years old. Whoever likes to uh, cultivate or keep your brain working, okay? <laughs> so, you know, that's the way I think that Otaku will be really helpful for everyday, your everyday life and every, everyday enjoyment. So hopefully, uh, I hope uh, many of you will join uh, Otaku, okay? Then, some of you may aware that some of the things have changed. One golden frame. Do you know that person yet? There's a 26th generation of Shinra Shonen descendant who is serving our head temple in Nishi Honganji in Kyoto, Japan. Then every Honganji temple must hang his picture portrait in the next to the altar. So when you go to the all different central child temples, like a uh, Wheatley, Pottier, you know, those kind of temple, you see the right side. That's why, because I, I, I appointed the Wimbun and the Fresno Bed Swing at the March 1st, so that's why I'm trying to do the proper way, the how what the Jodo Shinshi does. So he is a 26th generation of 
uh, our head monk, head minister of Mission Online. That's why we try to acknowledge him because he's a descendant of Shima Shon. So like a 26th generation. So that's a long time, right? So recently, uh, Mother Temple in Kyoto, Japan celebrated they have 850th year anniversary of Shimon Shoni. So that means long, long time. That, but not only the time, time-wise, because the time-wise, 850 years, that's a long time. Then how many people associated to this moment? A lot, right? Hundred thousand million people contributed their time and effort to strive Jodo Shinshu teaching. So not only him was great, not him is only the great. Everyone's great. That's how the Jodo Shinshu promotes everyone live equally. Everyone is equally precious and appreciative and respectable. That's how the Jodo Shinshu shared Buddhist teaching. Then especially today, my topic is uh, liberation from uh, faith religion, liberation from faith religion. Maybe some of you may wonder, oh, what's that I'm going to talk about? You know, liberation from religion, because we're supposed to come for the religion, right? That's how many you think about it. But how I learned uh, Jodo Shinshu, a Buddhist tradition, is totally opposite experience. Because I, I was grew up, grown up in Shinto faith religion. Shinto is a Japanese uh, animism, that, that's a Japanese uh, ancestor worship. So then, that when I was born, actually that before I was born, my, my parents, my father and my mother had a, a wedding at the Shinto shrine. Then when I was born, I was blessed by Shinto God. Okay, I was blessed. Okay, so <laughs> then after, after a while, I was wondering, you know, what the religion is. Because you now I was grew up in those kind of Shinto culture, then everything was like a, you know respectable, you know, because everything is a, like a main part of God, you know, things like that. But all, I always wondered, so what does God mean? Then when I turned 18 years old, so high school senior, one of the big events happened in Tokyo, Japan, in 1995 and 1996. That's a long time ago, right? Before you born. <laughs> Yeah, so at the time, uh, one of the cult group, just like a very school, uh, sprayed the chemical gas at the Tokyo subway station to, to become, make their wish to be a last day of the world. They call it like Armageddon, Armageddon, or something like that, right? Like the last day of the world. So they wanted to have the, the, the day of the last day of the world by creating like a destroy, destroying the whole, whole thing. So that's why in order to complete their wishes, they sprayed their chemical gas at Tokyo subway. Then all the you know the uh, innocent people got injured by chemical gas. Some people lost their eyesight, some people lost their breathing skill, that, that means the damage their all the lungs. So hundreds of thousands of people got hurt by religion. So that's, that was that when, when I was a high school senior, then I was really upset. So religion is supposed to promote the peace. Why they do opposite? So then when I was in high school senior, you know, the high school senior age, people feel like, oh, I'm, I'm mighty. You know, I'm better than my dad. I'm, I'm better than pop mother or something like that. You know, that's kind of, that kind of <laughs> motivation I had when I was in high school senior. And then, so, or maybe I should eliminate all the religion from the world. That way, everyone can be happy. That was like my wishful thinking you know, at the time of senior. Then I went, I was start checking the, all the different religions. Then, which is a, one of the biggest congregation they have in the society, in the religion, in the Japan. Then I look at the Jodo Shinshi. It's because at the time, I did not know the difference between the Buddhism and religion. So I just, I just saw the whole thing the same. Like Islam, Christian, Jewish, and Hindu, Buddhism, all the religion. That's how I was thinking. So I thought, what is the most largest organization of religion in Japan? Then I found out that the Jodo Shinshu. Okay, so I should destroy the other Jodo Shinshu first. <laughs> that way I can make much less 
less complicated situation, right? Then I enter the uh, Nihoku University, which is a ministerial school for the Jodo Shinshu tradition. So they started in uh, 1939. So that's a, that's a really old university, old university. Then uh, I started studying uh, Jodo Shinshu Buddhism. Then I realized, well, this is not something like a conventional religion that's talking about. Like, you know, usually conventional religion talking about threatening you, like, oh, there is a ghost, there is something spirit, so you have to obey something, there's something unknown, right? And also, you, if you are not following this uh, conventional religion, you're going to hell. But particularly, we hear about that, right? So I always wonder, so what, what the hell look like? What the ghost look like? You know, what the spirit look like? So I'm more like a uh, raised and grown in more like a scientific way to think about all the stuff. That's why I always kind of hesitate to understand and accept what the religion talk about. Then later, I realized, oh, Buddhist teachings, especially at least Jodo Shinshu, it really makes sense. Makes sense. Because, you know, basic understanding or fundamental understanding of Buddhism is that things as they are, things are impermanent, things are all connected. Those essential teachings does not require you to believe. Right? No matter what you believe or not believe, life's impermanent. You're getting aged, you're getting sick, you will die. Then I thought, oh, that's a super clear. Super easy to understand and also easy to share with others because I don't have to uh, persuade people. You, know, you have to believe, you know, no matter what, no question. I don't have to say that. See, you know, by seeing my hair in problem, right? That's how I it translated. Then I wanted to share the teaching, like a make sense of it. Make sense of it. Want to share with all the people. Then I apply to the minister who is working in the outside country in Japan. Then in 2003, I landed in San Francisco. The first things was not so much. Because the weather in San Francisco is so cool, then dry. So I got finally from like a weather of sauna in Japan. Because all the time hot and muggy. They came to San Francisco, they said, oh, that's my country. That's my country, that's how I felt. So since then, I spent almost like 21 years serving all different temples. Then, especially I was under the uh, uh, Limba ship. So I worked at all the different kind of base in Sacramento and Los Angeles here in uh, Fresno. So I worked for under the five Limbas. So all the different ribbons, you know, have a different personality. So I, I learned many personalities, how to read a good best ring as a flagship temple, as a regional way. Then now I start serving a best ring. Then I have a, my own envisions, how to uh, lead uh, this society go, moving forward, or with more optimistic and more appreciative way. So that's why I'm trying to uh, promote different kind of uh, event and activity, just like an Oka Club, right? So I hope everyone will enjoy those kind of activity under my uh, Wimbornship here at the best way. So I don't know how long I'll be Wimborn, but you know, as long as I serve as a Wimborn, I will try my best. So I hope everyone will uh, continue to support uh, Bed Swing here at the Fresno. So I, uh, so then uh, today I will, I had a chance of Choi uh, Rai-san, uh, the shoyai san is a, one of the most important chanting in Jodo Shinshu, maybe you never heard, right? The shoyai san became a trigger to make a prosecution for the Jodo Shinshu. Because shoyai san usually chanted the uh, uh, late night, by about 7 or 8 p.m. every day at the any Jodo Shinshu temple in medieval era. Then many of the ladies, especially from the uh, princess and queens from uh, emperor uh, castle, they wanted to uh, uh, attend these services. 
Then, at the time, the Japanese emperor got so mad, upset. Oh, why my girls are missing goes to the, all the different kind of location to, to not to serve me. So he, he's so upset that he, he tried to investigate who is taking my girls, my queen, my, my princess. Then finally, they found uh, the Jodo Shishu uh, temple uh, hosting a uh, nighttime meditation with the chanting of uh, Shoei Raisa. Then their, uh, uh, their, their officials found that all the girls or ladies are sitting in the temple uh, listening to chanting, uh, meditating with chanting. Then emperor decided, oh, okay, we will, I will execute. Okay, all the main monks in Jodo Shishu get death penalty. Then one of the main major uh, people in the Jodo Shishu will be exiled. So that's why at the time Shima Shoni was exiled to the most part of Japan, snowy country, without any, you know, he lost everything. He, his friends and his teacher, everyone, it's all scattered. And uh, main people who were chanted at the night was all killed. This penalty. But still, we carry these chanting in this uh, 21st century is because we try to carry their uh, their mind, their their feelings, how they wanted to provide and protect the Jodosin. <laughs> That's why we try to continue these chanting in nowadays. So when I was chanting, I was kind of so moved, I was almost crying. That's why like, my sound was like, <laughs> yeah, because I was kind of you know, thinking, you know, because my, my voice is not only my voice, because all the past generation made me impossible to have chanting. Then I was just, you know, during the chanting, so I was just uh, like, a, you know, like a recalling all the scenes. The people persecuted and all the people, people killed and Shima Shoni had to exile and all the things. You know, and nowadays maybe you don't think well, that's not part of my business. But as long as you come to the Jodo Shinshu temple, that's your business. Because that's a part of the teaching of interdependence. Every interdependence is matter. Matter. That's why we continuously chant those kind of things. That's why I wanted to introduce uh, Shoei Rai-san first. Because Rai-san has six different chanting for every four hours, which can accumulate 24 hours, right? That's why I first wanted to introduce Shoei Rai-san because that's the most significant meaning it has. It. So then uh, I, uh, I prepared a QR code in front of the Hoye then you can scan it, then you can have a YouTube channel that's direct to the, my chanting for Cherry Rice Line with the, all the explanation and all the uh, wording and music tones. So I hope everyone will chant, uh, practice. Then uh, next month, uh, April, every Thursday night, 7 p.m., we will practice the mindfulness meditation of chanting of Cherry Rice Line. So I hope many of you will participate in the session. So again, thank you so much for participating in uh, today's uh, first Rimbon's Dharma Talk. Okay, so Dharma Talk means sharing the Buddha's teachings. Buddha's teachings. So when I talk about something different, that's a Buddha, uh, Buddhist expression. Buddhist expression. So only time I share the passage of Buddha, that's what we call uh, Dharma Talk. So many of the Sundays in the past, I was just giving Dharma expression, not really the Dharma talk. That's why today also I will start as a Vimban, so I wanted to share one of the passages from our larger sutra, which is about maintenance. And most important passage uh, what I encountered when I was in college. And I realized this is really makes sense, and this is a liberation from faithful religion. So lastly, I'd like to read again the passage of Buddha from uh, Larger Sutra. So please, everyone, join me that show. Satsemi Bhagavan Tashim Buddha Katsema Nirayo Ba Kiradyayo Nir Ba Preta Visayo Ba Saluyo Ba Kayo Pavem Ma Tvat Aham Anutaram. 
たとえ仏を得たらんに国に地獄が日畜生あらば聴覚を取らずにオーブラロケスバーララージャン I, Dharma Kala Bodhisattva, will achieve the state of enlightenment, which means I will share the teaching of Buddha as Amita Tathagata. If my teaching is free from the three delusional beliefs. Number one, the teaching is free from any discrimination of all sentient beings. There is no superior creature nor inferior creature. Everything equally exists. Number two, the teaching is free from spirit or ghost to make people believe to follow their faith, petitional prayer, nor superstitions. The number three, the teaching is free from the delusional afterlife belief of hell, which conventional faith forces people to follow their teachings. Because people want to avoid it. Namo Amidabus. Namo Amidabus. Namo Amidabus. Namo Amidabus. Namo Amidabus.